looked at me. I don't know how I can fully explain what what it's like. I I need to start at the beginning, otherwise you're you're not gonna get it. I I had a sister. Um she she died of normal causes, nat natural causes. I I I think now I'm not so sure. I was sure then. I mean, as distraught as I was, I had an explanation and that was the end of it and and I just wanted to move on. When the lawyers called about her estate, I again I didn't I didn't want to hear about it. I just I just wanted to to try to move on. My my sister's name was Jane. M my name is John. Um, I I was always close with her. I, I, she was my baby sister and I was always trying to look out for her. Um, and she was regularly sick. That was really what did it. I was young and, you know, he, little boy sees his baby sister and they say, oh, she's got a fever and oh, she's got pneumonia and oh, we're going to have to take her to the hospital and oh, and just goes on and on and you get this sensation in the pit of your chest that draws you to protect. Um, so we didn't really have that sibling rivalry outside of she would always cry to get her way. And the way to get out of it was to give her a doll. Oh, God, she loved dolls. Jane loved dolls more than me, I think. Um, uh, she would just put all these... Um, crates and boxes together and make dioramas of where each of the dolls would live and she would set them up all over her room and then eventually after high school and college she did it to her own house just a house full of dolls it never stopped it never stopped to the point where you couldn't be in her house without feeling like you were being watched. Oh, she she loved it, though. And it was an easy way out. She'd get upset. She'd cry. The world was all against her, and you were just a bad person until you got her a doll. And then she'd shut up. I don't know what causes that kind of juvenile behavior, but we were all giving in. We're, we're all guilty of enabling that. I, I don't know. But I, I won't bore you with the details of my sister's condition. Jane would never have wanted that anyway. She... It would have just made her cry, and then I'd have to buy her a doll. I... <sighs> but the lawyers told me that she left the house and all of its contents to me. And um, I, of course, have no need for dolls. Or... Uh, dresses or diorama cases that the dolls can sit in so I I just figured I'd sell what I could donate dolls to 
I don't know, orphanages, third world countries. I, I don't know who needs dolls, but I got plenty. I, that's what I thought. Anyway. <sighs> Thankfully, I was a young bachelor. <laughs> because there is no way when I set foot in that house that... There is no way when I set foot in that house that... Um, I would have retained a significant other. Everything was pink. Wall to wall pink. And the dolls. The dolls were everywhere. The living room. The kitchen. The bedrooms. The bathroom. The closets. The basement. The attic. It, it was... It was everywhere. Tall ones, short ones, round ones, ones that talked, ones that peed, ones that you change the diapers on, ones that you don't change the diapers on. And I don't know where my sister had time for it because these things don't shut up. They don't shut up. They need and they need and they need. And I, I, at first I, I boxed them all up and just stuck them where I could f fit them, you know, uh, just moved them all onto stacks in the basement. But I'd try to go to sleep and I could hear them. They were all crying. They all had to be taken care of. Come back, John. We need you, John. It would say. Which really pissed me off, because I don't know when she took the time to program all the damn dolls to talk before they... With my name, no less. Oh. And of course, just like Jane... I get that sensation in the pit of my chest and off I go. Rushing down the stairs and picking up each doll and changing it and giving its bottle and putting it outside and changing the next one. The one wants new shoes, the one wants a new dress, the one wants a pony. And then I had to go find the damn pony. And I don't know how she managed it. I don't. Because I was missing work. And every time I set things up, every time I got things together to just get rid of the damn dolls, the screaming would start, the crying, over and over. And I couldn't, I couldn't bear it. So finally I just swept through took care of everyone, and went to see somebody about it, because I don't know what was going on. And I don't know why I couldn't sell these dolls. Every time I'd try, they were just, they were just not there. And I'd try giving them away. Nothing. And so I was just upset, and I was mad, and I just wanted to confirm my feelings with somebody. And he listened. And he told me that I was, I was just trying too hard to make up for the loss of my sister. That Jane was just, was just too much for me to lose. And since I was so, I guess, trapped in the dynamic of she would cry and I would take care of her, whether that meant... I looked out for her, or I bought her another damn doll. Ugh. Uh, um, and that it was just, it was just in my head. And I said, well, that's great, but how do I shut all the dolls up? And he said, well, you just would turn them off. And I said, they, they don't turn off, they just talk. Well, that piqued his interest. He asked if he could see the dolls, and I was like, gladly. I said, oh, be sure to take one on your way out. <sighs> mm. 
so we get there and at first it was quiet and the the therapist he said you see this is a manifestation of your guilt over not being able to save your sister even though you could never have saved her that was not your job you were her big brother you were not her savior you were not responsible for that and i said just give it a second trust me somebody's gonna need a problem solved one of these dolls is gonna start screaming Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. And my therapist just held up his hand and said, You see? And there it was. A cry. I said, You see? There it is. And he goes, Well, that was probably just one of them. That's not a big deal. And he no more than said that. And all of them start to cry. All of them. And it wasn't me. Because you could see the look of confusion. He's like, this is what you put up with? I said, yes. This is what I'm putting up with. And it, it doesn't stop. It never stops. I have to go through and take care of every one of these dolls to get them to shut up otherwise i get less than an hour of sleep at best he's like why don't you just get rid of them i said i've been trying to why don't you just throw them away i said i have tried to most of these dolls are filled with crazy chemicals and things that not even landfills will take i don't even know how these managed to get onto united states soil let alone be in somebody's house for all i know these are the reasons why my sister died he said you know what i understand and now that i've heard it too i can even relate why don't we have another session and we'll figure out a way together on how we can remove the dolls properly I said, that sounds fantastic. And he left, and I swept through, took care of each of the dolls, and I tried to go to sleep. Somewhere just after midnight, I felt something it was cold and smooth but definitely stone like polished stone it was wiggling my toe i sat up and all i could see was a little porcelain hand and it was making a strange motion like it wanted to wag its finger in a come hither style manipulation but its porcelain hands were like mittens and it couldn't manage that so it was trying it with the entire hand and i rolled up onto my feet and looked down and there was one of Jane's favorites. Hello, John, I heard, as I immediately pondered the notion of how badly I needed a CAT scan, how much I wanted it to be a tumor, how much I'd hoped that those dolls were filled with asbestos and we could, we could explain it all away with some strange cancer or illness. And somehow, in my enormous stupidity, out of all the attempting to rationalize what was going on into an illness, I said, 
Hello. We don't want to go, John. Jane left this house to us. She said so right before she died. I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I'm dreaming or I'm, 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 I have to be dreaming. And I just laid into it. I said, look, we've gone this far into crazy. Why not take another step? And I said, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the will Jane left had everything left to me, not the dolls. You can't leave a house to dolls. You can't leave property to property. It has to go to an owner or it has to be sold. So Jane could not have left the house to you. Oh, I know, the doll said. Jane left it to you so that you could take care of us. But it's our house. Who was the man? The man was my therapist, who I need because I'm going crazy taking care of all of you, I said. We don't like the man. Don't let him come back. And I said, I don't care. It's my house. And you're not going to be here much longer. Oh, no. And I said, oh, yeah. Not what I mean, John. He's not going to come back. If he does, we'll have to deal with him. And you. Suddenly this dream conversation, possible brain tumor, felt a little less like a dream or a tumor. Because then I heard giggling, whispering. I heard drawers opening. We have needs, John. We all have needs. And Jane said you would take care of us like you took care of her. We don't like the man. He said that he would help get rid of us. We don't want to be gotten rid of. Maybe he should know what that's like. Maybe you need to know what that's like. Through the light of the window, I saw the march of the dolls as they made their token, crying, needy sounds. As the light of all the knives in the kitchen gleamed as they marched into my room, as they marched around my bed, giggling and crying. We have needs, the doll said. Take care of our needs. Or we'll take care of you.